There is a quant topic that comes up a fair bit in both the GRE and the GMAT. And I was covering it with a student the other week and I thought, I've never done a video on that. I really should post a video on this topic on my channel. And this is the video. Yes, the title is fairly generic, counting methods, but the questions involved for this particular method are really quite interesting. They tend to come up at the higher level, by the way. So if you're aiming for below a 165 or a 700 on the GMAT, then you won't necessarily come across these kind of questions. Either way, they're very fun to do, and there's a great method for it. Many people take a really long way and often get it wrong, but with this method, you can get it right, usually in about 30 to 40 seconds. Let's look at the first of the three examples I have on this type of question. How many three-digit integers are there in which no number appears more than once, e.g. 457? Now, the wrong and long way of doing this would be to just think to yourself, oh, how many numbers would that be? Let's try and write down all the examples. That could be 128 or 129. Oh, there's so many. Oh, maybe I need to count up all the different examples between 100 and 200 and then multiply that by nine or something. Lots of long ways of doing it. But let me show you the right way. We're gonna count using a step-by-step -step approach. Now this method I'm gonna feature in other videos in the future because it's great for a certain type of combinatorics question. But let's demonstrate now. First, we're dealing with a three-digit integer. So I'm gonna draw out three spaces just so we know what we're working with. We've got three different integers here. Next, I'm going to write down in each space the number of options that I have available for that particular digit. So for that first digit on the left, that's the hundreds digit, how many options do we have? How many different numbers could there be for that first digit? The correct answer here would be nine. There are 10 digits in total, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's actually 10 digits if we include the zero. But we're not gonna include a zero because if the number started off with a zero, a zero in the hundreds digit, that wouldn't be a three digit integer. So that doesn't count. So we actually have nine options available for that first digit. And that's why I'm gonna fill that blank in with the number nine. Not because it means 900, it just means we have nine choices available for that first digit. And any of those choices would work just as well as any other. Now, here's where it gets a bit tougher. Think about it. We have now chosen our first digit. Let's pretend we've chosen that first digit. We've picked one of those nine integers that we have available and we've placed it in position one. Now remember that the question said, no number can appear more than once. And think to yourself, don't fall for the trap because many of you are about to, how many options do we now have for the next digit? Many of you would have said eight because we had nine for the first digit and therefore we can't repeat a digit, so there would be eight. That would normally be true, but don't forget we weren't allowed zero for the first hundreds digit. But we are allowed zero for the second tens digit. The number could be, for example, 108 or 903. The middle digit can be zero. There's nothing wrong with that in a three digit integer. It's just a three digit integer can't start with a zero because then it would be a two digit integer. So we gained one option. We are now allowed a zero for that middle digit, but we lost an option because we can't repeat the same digit we used for the first option. So we only have nine choices available to us for the second digit. It's a fairly hard question. I could have maybe started with a slightly easier example, but I hope you guys are learning something here. There will be two more examples following this. Okay, chance at redemption. How many options do we have for our third and final digit? It would be eight. We have all 10, take away the one that we used for the first digit, and the one that we use for the second digit gives us eight numbers remaining. And yes, we are allowed zero for that last digit. So there are eight options here. This is not the number 998. 
It's nine options and nine options and eight options. And what do we do when it's the word and? We multiply nine times nine times eight, which you can either do using my multiplication method if it's the GMAT or just type it in a calculator for the GRE. And that would be 648, answer C. Okay, I hope you enjoyed how this method works. You do it step by step. You draw out the spaces and just think to yourself about the first digit. Don't try and think of a grand formula for all of them. Just sit down and think about how many realistic options do I have for the first digit? Here it was nine because out of the 10 available, we can choose all of them apart from zero. For the second digit, it was nine because we have all 10 available and we can choose zero, but we can't choose the number we use for the first digit as no number appears more than once, etc. Do you wanna try that approach for this question? I recommend that you pause the video and try your best and see how it goes. The question is, how many positive integers are there below 1000 that have no odd digits? Okay, we're talking about the numbers below 1000. So I'm actually gonna give us three spaces. I know you're thinking, well, that includes two digit numbers and one digit numbers, but those can be represented by starting off with a zero. For example, the number 024, that has three spaces in a sense, but it's a two digit number. So we can still use three blanks here, which is a bit of a giveaway about the first blank. How many options do we have? Remember the condition is we can't have any odd digits. It would be five. There are five even digits that the first blank could be. Zero, two, four, six, eight. And yes, zero is included because the number could be, for example, zero, two, four, or zero, zero, eight, or zero, six, four. We can start off with a zero because it said below 1000. It didn't say a three digit integer. So we are allowed to include two digit integers like zero, two, four. So we can start with a zero. We have five options. How many options would we have for the second blank? That would again be five. The first blank doesn't change the second blank this time. It didn't say the digits had to be different. The number could be two, 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 four, 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 or four, four, eight. We can repeat digits here. And finally, five options again, just the same as before. Therefore, presumably, the answer is gonna be five times five times five, which is 125. But the eagle-eyed amongst you would have noticed one problem with that. We've included the number 000, which doesn't have any digits at all. In fact, that wouldn't even be a positive integer. 000 is the number zero, and that's not a positive integer. So we can't have that. We're allowed any other option, like 002, that's the number two, or 020, that's the number 20, but we can't have 000 because that's not positive. So out of the 125 options available, we actually have to take away one because that's the 000 option and the number zero isn't positive. It's even, but it's not positive. So the answer is D, we have 124 integers available. I hope you're starting to enjoy this method as much as I do, because I think it's a brilliant method to count up possibilities really quickly. Not a formula, instead a step-by-step -step methodological approach. Final question. Pause the video, try your best, and see how you go. What is the total number of four-digit palindromes? A palindrome is an integer that reads the same forwards and backwards, e.g. 3,443, because if you read backwards, that's 3443 4, 3 again. Now, as students, you've got to be honest here. Many of you would have totally struggled or not been able to do this question before seeing this video. And if you're one of them, please do leave a like and leave a comment to let me know. Let's try this difficult question using our method. It's a four digit integer that we're dealing with here. So we need four blanks. Let's think about the first choice. Let's not confuse ourselves with the whole number. Just think about the first choice. How many digits do we have available for our first choice? That would be nine. Out of the 10 available, the only one we can't choose 
is zero because then it wouldn't be a four digit integer. So we have nine options available. What about the second digit? How many options available there? That would be 10 because any of our 10 digits from zero through to nine would be possible for our hundred digit here. All 10 options. We can start with any two combination of numbers, three, four, nine, seven, any of those can still end up being a palindrome, symmetrical forwards and backwards. What about our third digit? How many options do we have? This is the hard one. Did you get that the answer is actually one? We only have one option available. Whatever we've chosen for our first two digits, say four and seven, we now have to make it symmetrical. So we have no option but to make the third digit seven and the final digit four. So it reads four, seven, seven, four. We don't have 10 options anymore. We can't do four, seven, eight. That wouldn't be a palindrome. No, we have to think step by step because each choice might influence the next choice. And here, after we've chosen our first two digits, we are completely constrained for our third digit and indeed also our fourth digit. I didn't write it down there, but it's also a one for the fourth digit because we have one available option for our final digit because it has to match our first digit. So it's nine times 10 times one times one because we have nine options for our first digit. That's all the numbers from one to nine. 10 options for our second digit. That's any digit from zero to nine, but then just one option for our third digit and one option only for our fourth digit because the third and fourth digits have to match the first and second digit respectively. Otherwise it wouldn't be a palindrome. Nine times 10 times one times one equals 90. So there are 90 four digit palindromes. If you got that one, massive congratulations because that was a pretty hard question and about as hard as palindrome questions get. A final tip for those students who are practicing dozens of these kind of questions, occasionally you might want to think about your choices going backwards. So for example here, we could have thought about how many options we have for our last digit and then our third digit, second digit, first digit. You don't always have to do it forwards. And if the question involves a certain number of even numbers or odd numbers, you might want to start with the final digit just because that's the one that has to be odd or that's the one that has to be even. Anyway, really hope you enjoyed this wonderful method and I shall see you in the next video.